Hi, I'm Howard Manns, and this is Northwest Outdoors. Why don't you join us at Farewell Harbor, where we're going fishing for salmon like these with Adam Graham. We're going to have a great time. Stay here. Funding of Northwest Outdoors is made possible in part by O'Loughlin Sports Shows. Puyallup, Portland, and the Redmond Sports Shows are proud supporters of public television throughout the Northwest, placing an emphasis on education for the great outdoors. By Kershaw Knives of Portland, Oregon. Makers of precision tools and cutlery, Kershaw Knives continues to support outdoor programming and outdoor activities throughout the Pacific Northwest. Every corner of the Pacific Northwest seems to offer its own unique flavor of the outdoors. Your taste buds are sure to be satisfied at the beauty of Vancouver Island, British Columbia and the Inside Passage. On this program, we head to Farewell Harbor, near the northern end of Vancouver Island. To get there is a day's drive from the city of Vancouver, or if you prefer, a small three-hour hop on board Kenmore Air out of downtown Seattle. Before you take off, you are treated to a collection of sounds and movement as the Air Harbor gets underway for its daily flights. the ground becomes a canvas of beautiful landscapes only this part of the world can offer. Farewell Harbor Resort is located on Barry Island in the middle of Blackfish Sound overlooking the Inside Passage. This area is in the heart of some of the best salmon and halibut fishing as well as fly fishing on the western coast of Canada. Join guide Adam Graham as he and Hobart Manns ply the waters of North Vancouver Island. Oh, we got a hook up here, Adam. Yeah, it's about time. About time. Well, let him run. Let him run. Oh, yes. He's going to go to China on this double yeah, action. Oh, that's a good one. How much line you got? Here we got line. He's still taking off, too. How much line? Let me see the reel. You're getting down. Come on, get attention. Get attention. Get attention. Come on, fish. Come on, get attention. Catch up with him. Catch up to him. There you go. Good. One okay, more just... one here. Let him go. Good. Let him go. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, it is. And I haven't put any lift on him at all. Yeah. No, but I can tell one. he's a big fish. Or if he's a coho, well, he's going to be run. the going to be the biggest one I've ever put. In. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he's heading down. A coho will normally come right up to the top, so we probably yeah. hooked into a Chinook out here. We'll be the only one here today with a Chinook. <laughs> At least so well, far. Well, it is getting close to the end of our Chinook season, but it's not uncommon for them to catch us, catch them at this time of year. So, your as Chinook season, you... my Chinook season is all year long. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on! Because <laughs> I'm not generally a nice guy, I won't let you play him forever. I, uh, Get them in the boat when I have the opportunity to do so, but sometimes don't they don't allow me that opportunity. I don't think we put any pressure on him yet at all. Oh, that's good. That first run with the, the pressure must have been a real killer because <laughs> he's coming part way. Well, he may just be conserving his energy. Well, here's the here's the fish. Oh yeah, nice fish. It we, looks like. Can we get him hooked in the? Oh, we're gonna hook him out. Nice fish. Yeah, he's one tired puppy after that big long run. Okay, let's just need the net head, and here we go. Got him. Nice fish. And look at the hooks. Came right out in the net. That's because you're a professional, Adam, and you get to fish with novices. Well, that's the way. But look at that. Hooks came right out in the net. He wasn't hooked all that well, so I'm glad we got him when we did. So am I. So let's. Looks like a nice fish. Probably go about 25, 26 pounds. Yeah, that's a king, isn't it, Adam? That's yeah, what we've been looking for. It's a, it's a Chinook, yeah. Okay, nice fish. All right. Uh -huh. Boy, look at the colors on that fish. Beauty. Gold and green. And yeah. Oh, that's a nice Beauty. fish. Look at the color in that. Well, yes. uh, this time of year, we get a lot of fish in the 20, 25 pound range that are like that. They're real gold yes. flex through. Got that under, underlay of green and, and bronze. It's going to be a beautiful fish. Yeah, you betcha. You bet. And he's really long. Really very, and very long and thin. Very yeah. long and thin. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times what this is good, um, indicative of are fish going up uh, real steep inclined rivers. Yep. A lot of the glacier rivers on the mainland are like that. They're very short, but very steep. And so these fish, they need the leverage in the tail to be able to get up those long rivers like that. Dandy. Well. Heck of a fish. Uh, close to 30. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> not, oh, not, come on. Not quite thick pounds, enough. Quite not, not quite thick enough. I'm, it may be less than 25, but it's... <laughs> well, you know what? It's a hell of a fish. Two no years what. ago, I was here at this very same spot with yeah. this very same guide yeah. and did this very same thing. <laughs> and the fish took a long time to land. Yep. That's a hell You've of a fish. You've done good, Adam. Well, I try. I try, uh, I try. You, do, you people up here at Farewell do wonderful. Uh, what's the daily limit up here on salmon? Uh, we've landed that very nice Chinook, and uh, what? how many more can I catch? What could we catch? <laughs> well, the daily limit up here, it kind of works in a uh, kind of a, a nice way in that you're allowed four salmon a day, two of which can be the Chinook salmon, and two can be coho salmon, or the silver salmon. Uh, or you can catch four pinks, four sockeye, or four chums. Uh, your daily, your possession limit you can take home with you uh, when you leave the lodge is two days possession limit. So you're allowed to leave here with eight salmon total, four of which can be the Chinooks and four coho or eight pinks, yeah. eight chums, or any combination therein. But not to exceed the uh, four, four Chinooks. Right, right. So it's, you know, if you leave here with four Chinooks, which a lot of people do, then you're, you're <laughs> taking a lot of fish home, you know. When they average about 25 pounds, that's a, that's a lot of meat. After bagging a nice salmon, Hobart and Adam decide to call it a day and head back to the resort. And how much did that Chinook really weigh? 24. Right on the money for Adam. Cool. Located on Barry Island, near the northeastern tip of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, 
Farewell Harbor Resort is complete with deluxe accommodations, gourmet food, and a full-service staff. It is listed as one of the finest fishing resorts in British Columbia. The, uh, the lodge itself, uh, I found the, the rooms and the social amenities that you've incorporated into them unusual. Now, did you hire a designer? No, no, I designed the whole lodge. I'm kind of an kind of an amateur what, designer, architect, or whatever. So, I, I, this good or bad, I did it. Yeah. One of the great things, absolutely great thing, is you walk into a room. We get off a float plane and walk into a room, and the room smells of fresh cedar. It smells like you built this facility yesterday, and I know that, how long has it been up? Well, it's the 15th year, yeah. 15 years in the Well, we, we, we don't uh, kind of plan that, but the, the neat thing, I have caretakers, and one of their responsibilities in the, during the winter is that any bright, sunny, nice day, they air the rooms. So the, the rooms are aired seven months <laughs> while we're not here, yeah. and uh, off and on, and that helps. And we're only open about four, four months. One of the other things that you do that is both comfortable, highly comfortable, is that you have a split day format in as much as uh, uh, we get up and have uh, breakfast and where do we go from there? Well, I, I <laughs> believe it or not, that the, the daily routine was pretty much tailored on the way I felt about life. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't personally want to spend nine or 10 hours a day on a boat. Just, I, you know, through all the dull periods and this and that, so. I understand uh, that, getting beat up out there. Yeah, and, and most of our guests don't feel that way. So we, and we have, remember, an awful lot of our guests are are over the 50 mark, and uh, an awful lot of executives, and a lot of, we have a lot of couples, a lot of ladies, and, uh, and getting up early is, is fishing. So we have, we have no problem with people getting up and no problem with the rain, but that three or four hours out there is enough, and, uh, so we, we do that early morning fish, and as you know, then the rest of the day we fish the tide. And so consequently, the, most of the people enjoy coming in after that and having a breakfast it, or brunch and, and getting a nap or whatever they need to do. At it, uh, it really is a, a, a great format. You're up for the first early bite, which is fine. You're back on the beach for a late breakfast, early lunch, a couple hours siesta or book work or whatever you want to do if you're a writer and you're back on for the afternoon, as you say, tide and bite, and back for dinner, and uh, you've had a full day, and yet you're, you're not uh, physically worn out at the end of it. When evening arrives, the scent of the fish smoker drifts through the air, adding extra flavor to the spectacular scenery surrounding Blackfish Sound. Looks like Adam's got one on over here. Okay, coming up to the top here, probably a big coho. Oh, there we go, little jump, little jump. One thing about these coho, they sure like those plugs. Yeah, they did. He wanted that tomic pretty bad. This is gonna be the most played eight pound coho in history here. Eight, six. Six? <laughs> no, I don't know. I think it's eight. So much for the coho being the best pound for pound fighter of all the salmon. <laughs> this one truly isn't doing much. Now he's cooking. Let's see if I can hit him with the uh, line there. <laughs> okay. All right, that's what, that's what happens when you have a quality guide like Hobart. <laughs> I get to reel in nice fish and... And I get to bag it. Adam actually lands one, gets to play it, the whole I works. didn't think you could do that. I wasn't sure that I'd be able to do it either. <laughs> you know, the, the thing about it is, is uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a, maybe a little smaller than average coho for this time of year. It's. Uh, I'd say go about eight pounds, and 
Nice thing about these fish is normally they put up a heck of a fight. This one was uh, a poor example of that. So. No, 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 no. Uh, if all fish are noble. That's a good fight. Not I hope so. I hope so. The, the part that I think is interesting is that you mentioned earlier that El Nino is a problem and that we've been having problems trying to figure out what depth and what particular thing these fish are going to go for. And while around us there's probably a dozen other boats in sight, so far that's the first fish we've porked this morning. Well, that's true. And uh, so you can't really say what we're doing is bad or the fact that you landed it is bad actually it's a bonus <laughs> oh I, I agree with you there i so, agree with you there yeah it's it's been a, it's been a funny year for fish with, with uh, everything that's been going on with all the commercial salmon disputes and and uh, el nino our water's about seven degrees te uh, warmer than it is in normal years which has got to have some sort of effect on what the fishing has been doing we've been catching fish uh, much deeper than we normally have which is you know has to have some sort of effect or some sort of uh, just have some sort of effect or some sort of, uh, you know, impact on what, what we've been doing here. And whether that is why there seems to be fewer fish around this year uh, or whether it's all the commercial pressure from Alaska and British Columbia both, it's uh, it's been strange trying to figure it all out this year. It makes it a good challenge for us guides, I'll tell you that much. Fishing is one thing and catching something else. And when the fish go elsewhere, probably that's what makes angling such a, a real challenge and a real sport is it you constantly have to relearn what you're doing on a daily, day-to-day -day basis. And that's very true, especially out here where there's so many different runs of fish coming through and so many different areas you can fish around here that it really makes it a nice challenge every morning waking up and there's so many different ways and different places to go and try and catch these fish that are out here. Uh, you know, the fish are here, all of our guests have been leaving with fish this summer and, and uh, going home happy, but uh, it, it's always fun when you when you have a year like this that uh, the circumstances change in every direction, and your your it definitely challenges you and challenges your ability to get out there and, and catch fish for your clients. It's uh, it's certainly a well. Let's go catch your clients some more fish. We'll <laughs> put these eagle claw hooks back in the water, and I'll put this one back in the tub, and we'll have that for dinner later tonight. We got it. Okay. Adam, you've got a, an unusual looking herring head here, not only from the color, but this isn't the way it comes from the factory. No, and you've tied your own hooks. Uh, what, what do you got going here? What are you doing? Well, what we've done, and, and uh, it's a fairly common practice up in this area, is, is modifying the different uh, lures that you might buy straight out of the package. This head actually comes just like this, and this is a new color for uh, for these heads this year. It's uh, called an army truck where it's got the green, red, and the clear. And what we do is we take, oh, about a 18 gauge uh, wire, and we modify it, and we put, uh, drill a couple holes through the head and insert this wire. And then what we do is we take this wire and we insert it in through the length of the herring. And what that allows us to do is to actually modify the role of the herring, have so much more control over what we do as far as the way the herring spins. And uh, let's get a toothpick here. Toothpick. That holds the herring in place. Just put it in and break it off. Put it in, break it off. And then what we do is we'll take it and this is also a, a, a custom tie-up for us too, is we take about 50 pound Dacron and tie a couple of number two treble hooks. When you buy it all set up and re-rigged in a package, it comes with one single treble. We like to have that trailer treble right on the back there, the same length as the tail, so that catches them more often than not when that fish comes from behind and, and grabs that fish. So now that we have that wire inserted in the herring, we can take it, and a favorite bend of mine is just to put a little kink in the tail, just like that. 
and uh, that, that gives that herring just a little extra flip and I think it makes it more attractive to those uh, big coho and big chinooks that we have out here. Yeah, so. it would. You can give it any kind of a roll you want and you make it the tight spin, a wide spin, big slow roll, tight roll. Uh, ideal way to do it and it's a lot simpler than uh, running the hook through it twice and I like the stinger hook. I yeah. did, so many fish will come up and take a strike or a flash and a flare at it and really not take the bait but those stingers will uh, pick them up when they when they make a grab. Well that's for sure and, and, and being able to modify that herring to all different rolls is, is very important. When you're fishing coho you, you generally want a tighter, faster you know, uh, kick to that bait but when you're fishing for those big uh, chinooks slow roll that's the key and, and uh, being able to adjust your, your bait any way you want it is, is, is a nice feature so that's why we do what we do to this herring head. Do they make that head in different sizes so that uh, you'd accommodate a bigger herring or a smaller herring? Yeah, this is actually an anchovy head. Yeah. Uh, but we, we've we always used them for the herring. We like the action a little more. You can actually buy a full-sized herring head for these. Uh, it's got a little different action on it, a little bigger, slower uh, roll to it. We like these ones. We, can, we feel we can adjust them more. This time of year, the smaller bait's a better thing with these fish anyway, I would think. Generally, yeah, especially when we're fishing for these coho like we are, it's uh, uh, smaller's a little better, I think. You've got a lot of lures and stuff in here that uh, we probably don't see a lot of. I think I'm familiar with the atomic plugs, and you've got three of them here, and uh, they're not all quite the same. You've changed some things here. What are you doing to these plugs? Well, Looks like you're tearing them all up or something. Well, again, getting back to modifying uh, factory uh, lures and stuff. Here's how Atomic would arrive in a package like this with a single hook and the pin running through the middle of the plug. What we do is we take uh, a, the pin out and, and remove that single hook and so what happens is you'll have this unit right here which basically has a single hole that runs right through up to the top. So what we do is we'll feed that line right through the top of that plug so it comes straight through and instead of having that single hook on there, which some people like single hooks, I'll take a set of t a tandem treble hooks like we saw in that herring, and I'll put that, tie it through on the bottom, and so instead of having a single hook on there, you've got that stinger hook that you and I like so much hanging right off the back there. So they tend to hook more fish uh, with this setup, I think. Probably six to one. You've got six points to work <laughs> with as opposed to one, and the modification, probably is going to allow that lure to have a lot more activity in the water because it's going to be freer to do what it wants as opposed to a hard knot tied to the end of it. Well, what this allows us to do as well with taking that pin out, because we, we troll so slowly with herring, is that this, ha this plug has a lot more action at a slower speed, which is important. And so the plugs are a very integral part of what we do up here fishing-wise. Catch a lot of fish on them, and so this modification is another one of our little things that uh, this seems to work really well. On any given day of fishing near Farewell Harbor Resort, you're bound to see wildlife. On this day, a school of Pacific white-sided dolphins and dolls porpoises decided to play right next to the boat. And when a whale watching boat is nearby, you can be sure the orcas are too.
Look at Hobart there. 